one of the few people anywhere in the industry that when I see his face, I am made happy. He has earned it at ESPN, and he has done it his way in a way that's really cool, and he's carved out his own space where he gets to have his life in Washington, and it's not great hours for somebody who uh, is a star in our industry, but he has moved his life around so that he can occupy a space in sports where he's got an hour at the end of your night that still matters that you know is going to be crafted and well done by a generally likable person in a climate that is so polarizing that none of the people talking about sports on television get to be liked. What a kind introduction by you. Perhaps the kindest introduction I've ever heard for you. I I really respect this guy's work, uh, that he's navigated the labyrinth, and that he's nice to people. He mm -hmm. is not horrible to co-workers, and he is not threatened (laughs) by co-workers in the vanity business. So, Scott Van Pelt, we welcome you in. He's the uh, Midnight Sports Center. It's his. Uh, It's a Space that he dominates and he does it extraordinarily well. So thank you for being uh, on with us. I I don't think that anything I said is untrue. I think I've got it all right. Yes. I mean, you're asking me to agree to an incredibly kind thing. I'm horrible at taking compliments. I I do that self-deprecating thing sincerely. I just I find it easier to deflect and to say thanks. So I'll just say thanks because that was very nice. Does everyone like you is what Dan is no. asking. Right? Uh, you, Absolutely you, you, not. You take pride in the way that you do your job still. You care deeply about what it is you're doing. You're never mailing it in. You're No, no, you couldn't. You couldn't. If you just if, if if you're just sitting out there by yourself and you just stop paying attention or caring, it would be real evidence. So but you know what? I was I thought about this the other day, Dan. Driving home after particularly after Denver won, where you talk to Malone and you talk to Jamal Murray, you talk to Jeff Green. God, that was so cool. There's a guy, 15 years, 11 teams, and it's landing in his lap that he's won. And the, the, the emo- he literally just said, I, I, I would like to go now because he just, he was, <laughs> the enormity of, 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 a, of a person in the, in the moment of their greatest professional achievement. And you get to share that with him. I, I wish there were a better word than cool, but that's just a really cool thing. And we, we get to do that. And look, there's some nights that just, or some nights, but nights like that are really fun. I was stunned and don't think it can be covered enough that the MVP of the league, yes, great for Murray, fun. uh, You know, you've got Gordon running around the streets of Denver enjoying it with the fans, but the MVP is telling you everybody hates their job, don't they? It's the most interesting thing I've ever heard Jokic say. (laughs) I've never seen a true superstar on on the – certainly not on the NBA stage, Dan, that didn't at least – kind of like the icing a little bit, right? Let me put my finger in the ice. Just what does it taste like? Doesn't care. And you can't, that can't be performative either. He sincerely doesn't give a crap about any of the ancillary. He just wants to go back to Serbia and see his horse. And he means that. And he's brilliant on, in a way really no one's ever been. I, I find that I find that fascinating. Uh, you can find it fascinating, but it's not charming. And I mean, I'm not sure it's good for your sport. Like, I'm not sure that having a guy that joyless about, like, Welcome just, to the party, pal. I, no, but I, no, his game is wonderful, Stugatz. I don't think his yeah, game. it's garbage. I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think his game is boring or garbage. McLean. But I don't think that he's terribly interested in sharing the joy with the customer. Yeah. Like, the customer <laughs> is feeling like it, the customer's more joyous than the guy who's winning the MVP. Yeah, Scott, the, the, the thing I said is part of the job and – there have been recent superstars that try to eschew this part of the job. Quiet Leonard is a great example. Uh, Jokic is a new example, but part of the job is selling the game. Like you, you do that when you're you're not just oh I play basketball and that's it. I don't have any other yeah. responsibilities outside of it. And so when Jokic takes something that the league promotes as this is our biggest event, this is the most important thing, this is what all these people are killing themselves over, and he's like ah oh, whatever, like. He's lessening the importance of it, much like music artists who say, I'm not going to the Grammys. They make the Grammys into something that's not that important for people to pay attention to. The difference is the Grammys are subjective, whereas the NBA championship is objective. That's the objective both in the sense of that it's not according to opinion, but also objective in terms of that's the objective of everybody working in this business. So I think he does the league and the game a disservice when he plays that I'm too cool for this or I'm not interested in that. That's a real, uh, and, and that's an interesting way, I mean, to frame it from, because the Grammys are the MVP, right? And he didn't care about that either. 
and he didn't care about the voting. But then when you win the chip, which is the prize that everyone's participating for, and you don't have joy in that, I hadn't really considered that. Maybe it's funny slash funny the first time, but then if it happened again and it was, you know, he reaches the uh, Dirk Diggler phase of Boogie Nights where he gets the trophy and just goes, thanks, and walks <laughs> off. I mean, there, there needs to maybe be some some joy in the achievement. I I, I really hadn't considered that. Scott, the Live PGA merger is fascinating. You and I love the sport. Um, yeah. Let's just put aside, because we know no one likes where the money is coming from, okay? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Phil's initial reason for joining Live was because some of the things that were happening on the PGA Tour did not sit well with him. You know, the money wasn't enough, the name and likeness, the ability to sell their social media a lot of the stuff that he was fighting for, he turned out to be right because the PGA caved. It's interesting, right? Well, what what is often the only thing that's understood in a negotiation is a loaded weapon. Uh, Live was that. And the PGA Tour responded almost immediately to all of the very pointed criticisms that those that went to Live made. And suddenly they found millions under couch cushions um, but what's what's interesting, Stu Gatz, is that this this war chest, if you will, that the tour had was was short term. Their burn rate was way too high. And if and I mean, when Rory essentially said, look, you can't go toe to toe with people who have a bottomless well of money, you're never going to be able to compete. And it seems that's what happened. There's still so much that's totally unknown about it. Uh, and you've got the government saying they'd like to look into it. I don't honestly have any clue what will happen ultimately, other than that what once was as it related to that game, that sport, won't ever be again as it was constructed. Does it bother you? Like, how often do you get personally offended by things happening around the sports you love? I'm um, I'm pretty pragmatic, and I think I'm pretty much an adult about when it comes to money, uh, that if we're looking – under the microscope or under the black light for the clean money. I don't know that there, it exists um, necessarily. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but n- no, not really. I, I just, I don't know. I've never had a nine figure decision to make in my life. And <laughs> I have a hard time judging those that do. I understand you could say, Hey, look, this is, there's some, there's some real atrocities here. And that's, that's accurate. Uh, I just don't, I don't know if with a hundred million dollars before me, I don't know what I do. Um, so no, I, it, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me just cause I think I'm just honest with myself about it. Do you feel that Jay Monahan's credibility has been permanently damaged and is that going to impact the way that you cover him and the story going forward? No doubt. No, I, I mean, I, I, again, I, I think just kids, this, I, I, my answer to, to that would be the same as my answer to Dan. I don't know how you can't just take the facts in front of you and just, he said, he, he said, you can't take the money to players that were on the PGA Tour. And then he took the money. And he went on with Jim Nance in Canada last year and talked about 9-11. And then, and he said as, he said it as much, Jessica. He said, I know I'll, I'll be seen as a hypocrite. Well, yeah, because that's hypocritical. So I immediately said that because I believe that's what it is. Now, again, I want to be clear. I don't know what I don't know about this. And so I'd love to know. What, what what are you exactly doing? What will this look like so that I can be fair? I mean, it, I think being fair is important and it, it's hard to know what to say about something when I have absolutely no clue what is there beyond what has been reported. Scott, beyond the money that they're going to be making out of this deal, how much of this or what are the positives for the game and for the fans of golf? Oh, they're going to grow the game. I mean, haven't you? Heard? <laughs> they're going to grow the game. That's the biggest nonsense. What the hell does that mean? What are you growing? I mean, you're going to have a so you're going to go have a tournament in what, Dubai or Portland, Oregon, or wherever you have a tournament, and suddenly, oh, you know what? Let's some guy sitting around going, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to play some golf today. <laughs> they're growing it. I, I honestly, I think it's more fun when the as it will be this week in L.A. When you get the best players uh, in the sport together, that's that's what's fun. And when you have a fractured sort of deal where a number of the best play here, a number of the best play there, well, then it, it would be like if there were a competing league for the NBA and you just didn't see, you know, you didn't get to see Jimmy Butler and Nikola Jokic share the floor. Well, now you're going to get to see that more. 
Uh, it's not an apples to apples comparison, obviously an individual sport, but my, my sense is just, if you enjoy that sport, seeing the best play more uh, than less is the win. So basically back to where it was before live golf existed. We're, Essentially. And just everybody, everybody will be, uh, <laughs> everybody will be obscenely compensated because there's this fun that, that, uh, that truly has limitless resources to, to, to give them the money that pro- I guess you listen, it, when you look at NBA Supermax, like it doesn't trouble me if, if, if a bunch of guys playing golf get to get eight figure, mm-hmm. nine figure deals either. Scott, I love that the best golfer in the world, at least at the majors, is a guy who is going to Panthers game, who is drinking with the Panthers, who really doesn't care that much about golf or working that hard. Um, nope. And he's headed, you know, into the U.S. Open with a chance to win his third. And not many people, as you know, have won the PGA and the U.S. Open three times apiece. Does Kepka have a chance at Jack Nicholas? Do you think he has a chance? No, I think that's a bridge too far. And really? I think, no. Well, to, I mean, to get to 18? Yeah. I mean, hey, look, I, I started covering Tiger a uh, hundred years ago when he was when he was you know 21 and he won at Augusta, and that he, he just Brooks is he's he's older and he's coming off significant injury. I mean, I if he if you ask me double digits, I I'd buy that. Okay. He's demonstrated that when he's healthy, he's absolutely as good as anyone. And he does have a a, a pretty well-rounded sort of view of what I mean, hopefully all of us look at our jobs and we take them seriously, but do they do they matter that much in the grand scheme as opposed to other stuff you'd like to do? Uh Kepke's, Kepke wants to go to sports, do, do his thing and um, and he wants to play in the majors that matter. That's what that's what he cares about. He doesn't care about the rest of them. He really doesn't. And he doesn't seem to be real pro one tour or another either. He's pretty pro Brooks. <laughs> and um, I think they gave him an opportunity to wave that flag after the PGA Championship. He just didn't care. He or at least didn't seem to, I should say. Um, he's, a, he's a badass player when he's healthy, and he is, again. We are out of time, unfortunately. The U.S. Open is this weekend, and I failed to ask Van Pelt about his voice just totally giving out on air. Man, I showed up. (laughs) See you later. (laughs) Next time. Stugatz just got done saying to me, uh, just glanced up at a television and said, no one in sports media looks more wiped out than Brian Windhorst. <laughs> Put it on the poll, please, uh, Juju at Lebitard show. Does anyone in media right now, sports media, look more wiped out than Brian Windhorst? This guy always looks clean and ready, even though he's irresponsible and often unprofessional and smells like booze. He always seems like he smells good as well. Uh, Jim Brockmeyer here for his weekly hit. I am very happy uh, to have you here as always, Brockmeyer. Thank you for making the time. The last few times you've been very mean to me to start the segment. So let's get that out of the way now, I suppose. Do you have something else for me? Because you've been pretty mean. Well, I'll try not to be as mean to you as you you were just to Windhorst. (laughs) Uh, amazing that you guys are pointing out somebody else's appearance. I mean, holy cow. Wow. Uh, first of all, a little disclaimer. I'm, I'm slightly more lit up than usual. I mistimed the segment. This is usually my second I'm on. This is my third. So, you know, I'm playing a little game today. If I mess up because of, uh, you know, if I trip over words because of my uh, inebriation level, I'm going to do a shot. I'm going to play like a reverse. Okay. Yeah, all right. Every so, time I mess up, I'm going to do a shot. All right. So I think Sa- it'll go well. I think it'll go well. That's Sazerac again? Yeah, Sazerac, of course. Okay. Heavy Cadillac, heavy boozing for this time boozing. of the day. All right. No, no. This is light stuff. I got a lot of ice in there. Come on. Okay. Very good. The third one. That cuts it. So, yeah. I love our time together, Dan Levitard. I just want to say that off the bat. Our banter. You're very good natured. You're good sport. I get to be the Don Rickles to your... Uh, Oh, I, I can't say Johnny Carson even in jest because that, that's <laughs> beyond, way beyond your talent level. Uh, no insult there, really. <laughs> no, no, no. Just the truth. I, I'm just I'm keeping it real. Keeping it 100, as a kid likes to say. Uh, Don Rickles to you, Tom Snyder, maybe? Remember Tom? Is anybody? That, well, they got all oh, you got a photo of him. That's Tom Snyder. If you, Google everybody. I just Google Don Rickles. Yes. Google Johnny Carson, kid. And Google uh, Tom Snyder. There he is. I'll wait while you look these guys. All these men are more talented than Dan Levitard. Yeah, no, okay, agreed. You know, and uh, yeah, Tom Snyder, because he was just basically a haircut with teeth. 
And <laughs> you really, you can't compete with his hair either, Dan Lebertone. Your hair, Dan, let's talk about your hair. We never talk about it. We don't talk enough about your hair. Let's say that you wear that children's impulse buy of a hat <laughs> simply because it's an improvement over what's underneath. But you know what? You, can, your teeth are not bad. Those bad boys are painted white professionally, so kudos on your teeth, Dan. How about that? I'll leave you a little compliment. Uh, yeah, barely a compliment. Anything for my outfit while you're at it? Because uh, I dressed up for you today. I put on a golf shirt. That's dressed up? That's an outfit? That's, that's what I'm looking at? The swath of fabric that you rolled into while getting out of bed? Wow. You know, that, you know, honestly, honestly, everything you wear looks like you threw it on at 6 a.m. to grab a package off the porch. <laughs> What kind of that's the kind of fashion choice you make that I, you it's like you want to be seen for only seconds, but you choose to live your entire life dressed like that. I have to point out to you again, we all can see you, okay? <laughs> if you're gonna abandon the very concept of presentability, let's at least pixelate you on the inner late like you're in Japanese porn or something. <laughs> Like a mass of little cloudy squares to hide that, which we as a society have agreed is much too shameful to witness full on. Any hoodles. <laughs> Boy, your outfit. You know, digression. You know what I love about Japanese porn? Come on. I got I got to I know that usually whatever follows that sentence is going to get you fired, but I'm pretty confident I can land this plane. All right. Here, here, please. I want to express this. Here's what I love about Japanese porn. <laughs> It shows real, tangible, nationwide commitment to subways and mass transit. It's always on subways and mass transit, which is something that we are going to need in order to create a green, sustainable future. That's true, actually. Because American porn is always on bang buses, yeah. Dan. As you well know, you, Dan, you know that intimately. Well, Amin seems to know it. Amin seems and to know you it. Know it. Not, Dan, too hard. Yeah. Killing the You're environment like, one, one tape at a time. Exactly. Thank you. And they're not even buses. They're just vans, really, and that terrible gas mileage. So we have to do better as a society. All right, society. very good. Can we stop well, There talking? was one mis- I said society, all right, so I got to do a shot. All right, do the shot there. You said interwebs or internet. You got that. You stumbled through it. We'll let that one go. A shot you of- think I, You think I do? I'm going to give myself just one <laughs> shot for that. All right, a shot of what? What is it? Is it Sazerac or something else? Is it uh, you just drinking Sazerac on yeah, top of Sazerac? The- I got the, the Sazerac is the is the Cadillac of the Mercedes of the BMW of Rise. All right, so can you right. please stop talking about porn? Sure. Why you're very touchy? What, what's what, what's such a prude? I know. I think I know why you're cranky, Mister Fuddy Duddy. How are <laughs> things down there in Miami? <laughs> because gee, I'm, I'm racking my brain. Has a city ever lost two different championships in back to back nights? Mm, I don't know. I imagine it's just <laughs> devastation across the entire region, just dead nightlife and clubs and restaurants closed. So many people in mourning. I mean, the hardcore fans down there, they have been following these teams probably since the beginning of May. I mean, <laughs> six whole weeks. That's the new love phase. Very hard when something so fresh and new for people is just snuffed out. So unceremoniously and so quickly. You're trying to kick us while we're down? That's what you're trying to do? Well, I'm trying, but nobody's ever really down in Miami. Come on, y'all have the weather, you got the beach, you got the food, you got the the drugs, you got the the sheer level of attractiveness of your entire citizenry, present company excluded, of course, mostly. I can see, Dan, why you have turned Miami into your fiefdom, because it's, it's just paradise. But there, eh, there can be no pleasure without consequence, right? Without sacrifice, which is why Miami is also a magnet for the most insane yeah. that could ever be forced to wade through. <laughs> yes, that's true. I mean, just yesterday, the traveling Trump carnival rolled into town just down the road from you all. Isn't that right? Uh, that is correct. You <laughs> must have thoughts on the freak show that is always trailing Trump. Well, yeah, it's worse than a freak. Freak show is a big compliment. It's like a low rent carnival. It's a geek show, is what geek. There, look at it, geek show. The kind of costume folks who will excitedly bite off the heads of chickens just so long as they're imagining the birds to be members of a persecuted minority, or the or the Capitol Police. I guess either one. Yeah, either one. You know, just nightmare clowns from a Rob Zombie movie. I, they, these people worship, of all people, Trump. They worship Trump, Dan. It was basically an elderly open mic comedian in the outer boroughs doing bad racist improv 
into whatever microphone we'll have them. I mean, it would be really stupid if it wasn't also the greatest threat to American democracy, <laughs> perhaps ever. Yeah. Now, you know what? Two things can be true at once. Yeah. Let's be m mature here. Two yeah. things can be true. So it's incredibly stupid, and, and it's the greatest threat to American democracy. Uh, and what are your thoughts on the charges? You think these are going to be the charges that stick, or what? Well, I, let, I, let's analyze. Let's go to the tape. They have him on tape basically saying, uh, folks, I'm committing a crime right now. <laughs> folks, crime, committing it. Or more accurately, uh, folks, I'm about to show you. My, my Trump needs work. Let me take another. No, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's a good Trump. <clears throat> <clears throat> folks, I'm about to show you would not have been a crime when I was president. But now I'm not president. It is a crime to possess this and to show it to you, folks. Is that not cool? Do you not think that I'm cool, folks? Cool, me, cool. I mean, unbelievably pathetic. Waving around nuclear secrets to impress the likes of uh, Antonio Sabato Jr. <laughs> That's what he did. Remember, remember the days when we all thought that Trump was stupid like a fox, that he was playing five-dimensional chess? Turns out the guy can't even play Connect Four. OK, <laughs> diagonal confuses him, keeps getting distracted, trying to put the little tokens in by shoving satellite photos of America's secret military installations <laughs> into our face. But will he be convicted? That right. Was, that will was the Trump... question. That was the question I asked. Yeah. Yes. No is the que is the answer. No chance because he is right about one thing. Two systems of justice in this country. He belongs to the one where if you're rich enough. You can buy your way out of consequence because you, you can't pull 12 sane Americans in Florida to serve on a jury. I, I'm saying 10 to 2 mistrial That's true. whenever this thing wraps up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excuse me. But I, I have a very important question about this whole thing for you, Dan, since you are my local Florida expert. Does this story of this alleged, 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 alleged crime and all its headlines, does it officially turn Donald Trump, the famous New Yorker, into Florida man. Is he Florida man? Oh, that's a good question. Florida man is always the most famous of the criminals in the headlines that have perpetual weirdness in them. So, yeah, I think that's a pretty good. Uh, I don't know whether he goes from New York to Florida, but he is a Florida man in spirit. Well, let's 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 reason through this, because to me, to be Florida man requires three things. OK, first, you need an incredible newspaper headline, one that really commands your attention with its gobsmacking, ridiculous criminality. So I would say that ex-president steals state secrets and hides them in his get. <laughs> that qualifies as number one. So check yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> one down. All right. Second, the crime itself has to be unbelievably stupid. Uh, no, so he's got this one handily. Yeah, right. In the indictment, one of his lawyers says that Trump at <laughs> It is, it's uh, great. I got to, Donald, I got to yeah. drink a little yeah. toast to Donald Trump. It is. It's great and it's terrible. You're, it's Nothing amazing. can be funnier than the actual reality of it. So in the indictment, one of his lawyers said that Trump asked him, asked a lawyer to steal a classified document by silently making a grabbing gesture. What's known as a yoink. That's the yoink. <laughs> he tried to get his own lawyer to commit a felony through a game of charades. Yeah. Amazingly stupid. Double check. Discount yeah. double check. Okay. Lastly, and here comes the tough one, to be the Florida man, the story has to involve an alligator somehow. Got to be an alligator. Ah, see, that's where your theory yeah. falls apart. No alligators yesterday when Mike Ryan was uh, close to being tear gassed. I know. <laughs> I know. I was really. You know what, though? It's so close. The stupid son of a bitch has got to done something idiotic with gators around at one point. I'm going to Google Trump, dumb, and gator, alligator. <laughs> oh, right away. There we go. 2019. I'm going to quote here. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. This is a real story. Okay. New York Times. Yeah. New York Times. I swear. Privately, the, pre the president has often talked about fortifying a border wall with a water-filled trench stocked with alligators, okay. prompting <laughs> aides to seek a cost estimate. Okay. That's, not real. That's, That's not a real, real story from the Times. That's not real. Oh, that that's real? real. It's real. Trump, it is he's real. Florida man. Trump is Florida man. <laughs> all right. Let's change all, all right. those headlines just to Trump. Brock Myers, stay there. I want to talk sports with you. I want to talk some basketball and some baseball with you. Stay there. We're going to come back with you after this. I just saw the headline. Yeah, it's true. All right. Oh, it's totally true.
mean, what were you laughing about? And why did you just mutter during the break, shoot migrant legs? Is that what the phrase I just heard you mutter into the microphone when we were off air? This is the New York Times, the paper of record. The headline is, shoot migrant's legs, build alligator moat behind Trump's ideas for border. I thought I thought Brock Meyer was just a drunk. No, <laughs> no, he uh, he comes with accurate information. Uh, again, two things can be true. I am a drunk, and that is real. <laughs> Your thoughts on the NBA Finals? Surely you have some thoughts because I couldn't even get you last week to talk about baseball because you wouldn't shut up about basketball. Yeah, you know I love the NBA uh, Finals. Saw Mike Ryan yesterday though, blaming the gentleman sweep. On referee Tony Brothers, Ryan? What, as if Miami didn't get any calls in this series? One of the last plays of the game was Aaron Gordon getting called for a three-shot foul for having the audacity, the gumption, to get kicked in the nuts by Jimmy Butler. That's true. After all that, Ryan, is, is st you're still playing the ref card, huh? Yep, he is. Should, uh, his balls well, should have given uh, Jimmy a spot to land. Uh, yeah, good point. Very good point. Uh, but, yeah, I call that hogwash, poppycock, yeah. and cod swallow. Oh, That's really? right. Yeah, cod, yeah, swallow. cod swallow. Well, really? In cod that swallow. order. Because <laughs> the Nuggets were flat out better. And to prove it, you know what? I'm going to back this up. I'd like to use my favorite analytical stat. You kids, you love the analytics. Okay, here's the stat you can always rely on. It's called wins and losses. <laughs> Those numbers, boy, yeah. they really, they generally help show you which are the better team. Yeah, that's true. Okay? Last 10 games, Miami Heat's record was three wins yeah. and seven losses. Right. Fo follow the numbers here. Yeah. Okay, not, not too good. All right. Hard to accomplish for a team that makes it to the It really is, actually. Yeah. I mean, remarkable in its wretchedness. Now, let's look at the Nuggets' record over the last 10 games. Nine, oh. I said tan games. Here's to you. It's ten yeah. games, not tan games. You That's know right. Uh, ten games. <laughs> Last ten games. Nine and one. Yeah. So one team was out over its skis with its white hot shooting and came back down to earth. And the other, historically great. Seems that way to me. And they're just getting started. Uh, that is accurate. And they're just getting started because of Jokic. Uh, you're as flabbergasted by him as the rest of us are, correct? Yeah, I mean, it's not just because I'm pretty drunk, which I am, but I, he's just amazing. I just, I love him. I mean, when your most talented player is also your most unselfish player, that's when you win in basketball. His teammates just fly around knowing, they know that their effort is going to be rewarded with the ball. How many superstars can you say that about? Only the thing more remarkable than his amazing performance to win the championship was his complete lack of interest in celebrating. It was. Did you it see really that? was amazing. <laughs> He literally is like, I want to go home. I just want to go home. Why? <laughs> you know why? Because he loves his horses so goddamn That's much. Right. How about that? That's correct. What's with these? Like a 12-year-old girl who has in a stall all day drawing in her journal. I have a theory on that. I think I know why. Because when you're just the biggest thing anywhere you've ever gone, sometimes it's nice to feel small, isn't it? <laughs> Carrying your family and your country and your franchise. Yeah, and your, yeah, yeah. I said franchise, not franchise. I got to do a yeah, shot. That is uh, not another Whoa. shot, Brockmeyer. Come on. No, it helps. It helps. No, it doesn't help. You're getting worse. It helps a lot. It doesn't help. You're carrying all these things, including your adopted home. Sometimes you just want something to carry you, don't you? Because strong men, they, they, feel, they need to feel supported, too. I, Dan, you know what I'm talking about. You're a big, <laughs> strong fella. You got a lot on your shoulders. Sure, you've gone into a pool with a lady friend, maybe your good lady wife, at some point, and just hugged on her for a while. You know, you, just, you, you use the lack of gravity in the water, let her fully support your full body weight. <laughs> body right. weight. That's God, not right. Body dude. weight. That's not right. You're getting drunker. Please, that you wasn't a shot. Seat? That was just a sip of your sass. I'm, I'm out of shots. I only lined up three. <laughs> you thought you were only going to make three mistakes. <laughs> He's I'm back, back to the drink. To, I'm back to the mothership. I'm back to the mothership. But, Dan, you know, seriously, you, you want to feel the safety and the protection that you haven't known since you were a child. I mean, I know that, admit it, you, you've okay. done that. You've yes, been in the pool with your that. good lady okay. wife, and she held you. Yes, gravity. Like the, you like the big, all of that. Yes, the thank big you. horribly dressed you, teddy bear. That yes, you thank you. Uh, <laughs> the I, lack of gravity. I wear, yeah, I wear my shirt in the pool as well. Uh, can we get to baseball, please? Please? Sure. Um, we're supposed to have a segment with you. It's supposed to be. Uh, I know. Uh, you get a minute last, to do a baseball segment. Last week you called it ball for uh, one minute. 
Yes. Give me 60 seconds to summarize an entire week of the greatest game ever invented. Yes, one minute see, of I, baseball. One minute. Basketball's over. Football yet to begin. We're the only game in town now. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the NBA draft at the beginning of NFL training camp. It's like nine days here where sports fans have to pay attention to us. <laughs> okay. You have to. It's 30 they got seconds. no choice. You're, you're down to 30 ah, seconds right. okay. now. <laughs> right, I thought of, um, Oakland A's. Oakland A's, I highlighted them last week for their incompetence. Seven-game winning streak since you, Seven uh, and since, since you ripped them. Yes. Longest winning streak in baseball. And just last night, the Oakland fans threw a reverse boycott <laughs> where, they, where they drew the biggest crowd of the year yet yeah. to gather and fight for their A's by leading chance directed at owner John Fisher to sell the team. Yeah. Sell the, that was a beautiful thing. Yeah. Watching them shout out their love for their community and their game. Right. We and gotta go. We gotta go, ah, Brock Meyer. On, We're time's gotta up. Go. We gotta get out of here with you. Enough. Enough. I, I well, I, I'm not even as lit as I usually get. Uh, uh, next week, it's... we'll talk to you again next week. Sure, as long as the checks keep clearing, which they have, or until you start showing up to work in a, like a dirty, loose robe. <laughs> which at this rate will probably be by August, right? Uh, thank you, uh, Brock Meyer. Good talking to you. Good seeing you again. We will talk to you again next week. Enjoy the drinks. Skull. Uh, Skull. Yes, he is just hammered beyond all reason here. Uh, thank you for being on with us. Uh, no, no, you're not going to be in about 15 seconds uh, because of the Sazerac. Amin told me uh, during the break, and I don't know what – the truth is here because he didn't give me any more information. He just told me there's a huge scandal at Metal Arc Media. And I don't know what the scandal is at Metal Arc Media. Yeah. Uh, does anyone else know? Because it seems like the entire room is looking confused. The fine Have you told anybody? Uh, no, this is going to be a knives out situation, Dan. Mm. Where someone, Very exciting. someone here has committed a crime. Wow. Billy is yawning openly in your face, just uh, not interested in any way in what you're it's alleging cover. about scam about <laughs> scandal. Suspect number one. I've never there. heard you call anything around here a scandal. Are you a detective? Like, are you solving this crime or you've just identified it? Because we have a detective in Tony that already works here and he has never lost a well, case. We could share the, we could share the role. You know what? Typically, I would involve Tony, but I don't know if Tony's in on it, too. Wow. Wow. I'm Daniel Craig right now. And all of you, all of y'all, are suspects in my book. <laughs> because last week I had a beautiful slice of flan in the fridge with my name on it that found a way to disappear into thin air. I'm going to get to the bottom of this, Dan. Right. I'm going to start with Billy. Hey. He doesn't seem like Still your yawning. hot, your hot yeah. light of interrogation is phasing him in any way. Uh, that is a rude thing, by the way. There are any number of rude things that happen about here. I, I, I was embarrassed that Mike had to put in the slack the other day. Hey, guys, put the toilet seat down. I Se almost fell in. Seems like a lot of people didn't get the message. No, I, I, mean, I almost fell in. I literally was <laughs> a, a centimeter from ass touching water. Sorry. Centimeter. I, they, I, we live with untrained wolverines, Look. and and the idea that you would put something in the office fridge with and it my would have name, your name on, on it. it you wrote your name on it i you know what that's unforgivable i started to write just the the initial a on it yeah. that should be enough i said no 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 let me make it clear it's flan and it has my name on it but you I'm left it here man for Eat breakfast the flan. for breakfast i do a whole bits to god it's called breakfast flan <laughs> i came in i put it in there in the fridge i said this will be great for tomorrow morning when i'm parched walked in tomorrow morning no flan wait you wait what? So this has been ongoing for a week? Well, I had to leave. I don't know if you know this. I, I had to go cover this thing. Yeah, called a, after a week, you're all designed. Yeah, you should purge some stuff after a week. Cause yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I discovered it was missing last week, but I discovered it after hours, and then I had to leave. So I could not, I had no, like, outlet to. So you couldn't confront loyal. the criminal. Exactly. So it was there for a day, is what you're saying. Exactly. And so within a day, it disappeared. Yes. I mean, I saw said breakfast flan. Mm -hmm. I opened the fridge, as I usually do at around 11.30, mm -hmm. try to see what's in there. I was like, ooh, Amin has a breakfast flan. Nice. Well, why are you looking to see what's in there if you don't have anything in there? Because there's, there's some there's stuff that's for every. Yeah, just for poking everybody. around. There's, yeah. there's yeah. stuff that doesn't have people's names exactly. on it. Exactly. That's where things get confusing. Because it makes me not want to bring things in in the fear that someone will drink or eat my thing that I've brought in for me. Uh, 
allow me to demonstrate for you why you should have that fear. Someone ate my breakfast flan! I mean, I have a solution to your problem. I'm working on a very serious true crime series for Metal Arc Media in production right now about who stole the fine bucket money. Wow. And I think that we may have a side quest because this could be demonstrating no. a pattern of thievery. It could be the same thief, someone oh. who indiscriminately steals cash and breakfast flan. While I admire your, your ambitions, I, I do declare that my flan and should fog take horn, priority. Foghorn, leghorn, all of a sudden, I do declare. My, I should take <laughs> priority when it comes to the focus of the investigation in hand. Now, Bill I, Clinton? I have a I mean tried to exploit fine. these crimes in the opposite way. Like, for example, I brought in a six pack of Mountain Dew Pitch Black <laughs> because I didn't necessarily love it and i said i'm not going to keep this six you pack brought in us my your house. trash Billy. yeah i brought it and i put it in the fridge and i thought someone might enjoy this and i just left it there and there's still three which means two people have had which is great because that was a donation to the community also after my daughter's birthday party i brought all of the leftover cake all of everything and i just left it there i'm like someone will eat this so I've, I've kind of made this You're my own personal. You're treating our fridge as your garbage Well, cake. no, it, they're donations. <laughs> I'm making donations. Now, we lost power that day, so the cake did sit in the heat in the darkness for like two days. So I don't know what happened to it. I mean, do you have a chief culprit? Well, I, I'll tell you. I, look. I'm what was that? Well, was, tell me anything. Oh. I was talking to Michelle, Sasha, Malia, and I got to say, this. Why is William, he here? William why Gill. Is, why is Guillermo he here? Guillermo Gill. Is that his name? Why is he here? Well, because sometimes, Dan, you need a presidential uh, kind of approach to discovery who's uh, betrayed the, the union. <laughs> <laughs> this union has been betrayed. This is an office crime of, of the highest order, I would say. Stealing somebody. Why would I take Someone your stole money, Dan. No, but I would say that this is even more personal. This is even, because that was community money. This was just his breakfast. <laughs> like you put something in a fridge, you expect that your colleagues and friends are not going to steal it. With yeah. my name on it. One is stealing. <laughs> one is genuinely against the law. The other, it's breaking the unwritten rules as well. Did and you and check that's not okay. All the shelves? Maybe what? it's still there. It's not Blake's fault. That's what I did check. <laughs> Why are you doing a Doc Rivers impersonation? I just want my breakfast flan.